Happy Socktober, y'all! Okay, today we're gonna make a tiny little coin purse, okay? So you will need extra pieces for this that you would have to get, but this is what we're gonna do, and it's gonna be, it's gonna involve some flat fabric knitting. So the piece I'm talking about is the piece that you are gonna put into here that opens like a coin purse. I bought them on Amazon. They call them, well, these are a 10 pack, four inch elastic pocket clip. So they're four inches and you put them in your, in the hung hem and you're good to go. So you do that after you finished though. Okay. So these are what you would need. These are four inches. These are um, a good length that you need. Okay. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be knitting flat fabric for all of this, okay? And then for the inside, I should say, okay? Flat fabric. Then we're going to switch halfway through and go in the round for an even number of rows of the flat fabric. Hang it. So we're going to hang the hem and you're going to sew up one side. That's where my flat fabric was. It's not the prettiest, but it works. And then you crank in the round after you hang your hem for so many rows and you don't decrease or anything. You'll just put waste yarn on and Kitchener all the way across half of your, uh, this is a 64, so it'll be Kitchenering across 32 stitches. Okay. Let's hope I can do this. Okay. So first off, I need to adjust my tension. I'm going to use Patton's Croy, which to me, Patton's Croy is not quite a thin sock yarn. It is definitely a little bit thicker. So this is your tension knob. And to make your stitches longer, you need to turn it clockwise. So I'm gonna do it four clicks, which means it's bringing this V-cam down, okay? So when you're clicking this down, this piece pushes this down, makes your stitches longer. Cause whatever it is from here to here is your stitch length, right? So if you make it go up, your stitch length is shorter. That's the biggest problem people have with their tension. They make their stitch length too short and then it jams up on the machine. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna click mine four clicks longer. So one, two, three, and four. All right, so it's gonna make a longer stitch and we're gonna have the heel spring on for the flat knitting. So it will tighten that up when you have the heel spring on it. All right, so first off, let's just add some waist. Uh, let's put our bonnet on. Jeez. <laughs> add waist yarn. Yeah, right. Just add the waist yarn right onto it. All right, so this is my bonnet. It's a split ring bonnet. Oh, I didn't turn this light on. Let me do that. I think it helps a little bit. That's on the yellow side. I like it on the cool side. Warm side, cool side. Okay, every other needle, you're going to hang your bonnet. Now, flat knitting, you could make all kinds of panels. It is going to be stockinette, though, so remember it's going to curl upon itself. It would need to do blocking and whatnot, but I've never made, like, a whole flat panel and then made, like, a sweater or anything on this, so people have. People have done that. Okay. Grab my waist yarn. And you might be able to tell with my waist yarn that my stitches look longer if you've been watching these videos. Okay. Hanging, cranking around halfway or there are about so you can get to these needles which were down in your cylinder. So you can hang them and you'll be able to go around and around, okay? Sometimes that's what you get when you reuse waste yarn. Now, because I want to do my flat fabric starting here, this is a blue mark here, which indicates half of the back needles. I'm going to stop there versus on needle number one. Okay. But I am going to put rib cord in. So we're going to do that. I could have went around another round. This is a long tail, but that's okay. 
put you on. All right. So stuff that down in there. Then we're going to add our rip cord. Which is weird doing this on the different part of the machine. Okay. And then stopping on the last needle. Then we're going to load in our project yarn. Okay. Load in the project yarn and crank to 6 o'clock, the front of your cylinder. Because we're going to have to manipulate all these stitches here every pass. I'm going to reset my counter so I have an, a semi-idea of how many rows I've done. Okay. Let's hope this gets me through the flat knitting. I'm using just leftovers from socks I made. My husband loves socks in the Patton's Croy. All right. So we're going to load this in. Get it so the first needle is grabbed. I'm not putting my heel spring on yet. I'll do that after I grab a couple stitches, okay? All right. So we're cranking around to the front side. Now to do flat knitting, I'm putting my heel spring on now. To do flat knitting, you don't want these needles to knit. So... You're going to have to lift them all up. You can do this using your finger or your crescent tool, whatever you feel comfortable with. So about a fourth of the cylinder is enough. It won't go past that and start clicking here. It'll stop clicking real close to that last needle though. So you just have to be aware of that, okay? So you're going to crank around and it's gonna click here and it's gonna click twice every time. Okay. I don't like that it, I'm lifting two more. There's that last click, okay? So now when you're coming back around, you gotta watch this last stitch. Look, it didn't knit. So I'm gonna manipulate it because it didn't knit my rip cord. Come on. Okay, now it has knit my nip rip cord because I made it knit the rip cord. Okay, so my heel springs on, so it's holding the yarn tension. But this first stitch, am I doing this right? Now I can't remember. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so you're always going to stop at the front of your machine. Okay, you're always stopping here because you need to manipulate these stitches. So you're going to put these back down. Making sure your latches are open. Sorry, I have not. Some of these I have retested before showing you guys to make sure I remember, and some I haven't. All right. Always watching these. Now we'll have to put weights in eventually, okay? Now we're going to come back slow because we want it to knit that first stitch. The first one's always the one that's going to give you problems, okay? We're going to do... 14 rows essentially. All right. So it's going to click twice for every one. Well, between 12 and 14. So it's going to be up to 28 by the time we get to that many flat because it's clicking it twice for each row. Okay. So once we get further down, this is going to need weights, but we're going to keep going. So now you're going to lift these up. And if you have to crank forward to make sure these aren't under the V cam, you can do that. Okay. Forward and then slowly making sure that first stitch always wants to knit. Back to the front. Putting these down and lifting these up. Click, slow, to the front. Now you can put weights in whenever you feel comfortable. I might put one in now. Let me lift these up first. So you can put a fork on each side or you can try to capture 
Um, I'm just going to put one on each side and just make it easier. That's not catching it. So you want it to be kind of up high. You probably didn't, I probably didn't need my forks this early. But we're here now. Okay, so we're going back around. These are out of work, so this won't knit. Slow. Putting these back down, making sure latches are open. Okay, lifting these up. My uh, thing is not clicking. Well, isn't that funny? Something's not quite right. There we go. There we go. Okay. My V cam, the little triangles, was kind of pushed. This was here, if you can see, it was kind of pushed forward on the other side, so it wasn't clicking the needles. So I just kind of pushed it back into place. Okay. Slow. Back to the front. Okay. Putting these back down. Lifting these up. We're at 12 now, so we're going to double that. Okay, slow. Back to the front. Putting your needles down. And then lifting these up. Okay, and we're just gonna keep doing this. Flat knitting, you can't just keep, you can't go fast. You're, you're really paying attention to what you're doing. Because there's a lot of mani needle manipulation and watching that flat fabric, how it's pulling out. I'm gonna move my forks again so we do not have any problems, okay? It's actually easier to get them in once you have a little bit of fabric there. All right. Slow. Stopping. Some people do this faster and they're putting these down as they're cranking around. I mean, if you have really good coordination and you want to do that, go for it. I don't have that good of coordination, so I'm not. I'm at 20. Like I said, I'm going to do about 24 to 26, which will but be half. Oops, lift up. Don't forget to lift up or you would just start cranking in a circle. We're just going to keep continuing this. You can actually hold the fork in the back if you feel like that gives you the pressure you need or want. Okay. So we want to be going back in the round. So we're going to go back this way and then back one more time and then we'll start going in the round. Okay. So I'll just count, make sure I have my count ready. So I know, and I'm actually going to move this again. It moves it down pretty fast. It's surprising. Okay. All right. So this is 26. All right. So let's say that's 13 because that's half. That's what we're just going to count it as. So when we go to go in the round, we're going to do that many rounds flat. 
Oh my. I should have showed you guys that if you didn't see me click it. Okay, now we're gonna start going in the round again, all right? So we're gonna stop. Like I said, it was like 13, 14 rows, all right? So put all the needles down, because we're gonna go back, start in a circle. And this is gonna join, um, and because we're folding it over, it's not gonna be noticeable. Some people would manipulate an edge stitch here real to make it look prettier. I'm not worried about that for this project. Okay, so now let's do 13 rows in the round. And going slow past these in the beginning. And I'm gonna keep my heel spring on only because I had my heel spring on for the first bit and I want it to match when it's folded over. This is how you would make like a thumb hole if you wanted just a thumb hole. All right, 14. We'll start hanging on this first side. I feel like it's a lot wider. <laughs> I feel like I did way more rows. Well, maybe I screwed this up. Maybe I was supposed to do less, but you're getting the picture and you can just sew this up with the tail, okay? You'll just sew it up. You won't even notice it. So let's take all the weights off so we can hang it onto itself. Remembering when you're doing a hung hem, you wanna make sure these stitches aren't coming off the needles. And since I know my first stitch was the one right after the blue mark, that's what we're going to hang first. Okay, and that's this stitch right here. Come on, pretty little stitch. Again, good contrasting yarn helps for this project. For all your projects, if you're hanging a hem, it's important to be able to see your project yarn versus your um, waist yarn. So maybe I did too many rows. Like I said, I did not re-practice this one, and I haven't made a coin purse in probably over a year. So, and I don't do a lot of flat knitting, honestly. Um, I did make quite a few Christmas presents last year on my 48 cylinder with DK weight yarn. I made, um, a couple pairs of fingerless gloves and they were very well received. All right. So just hang this hem. We've done this a few times now if, if you've been watching along. Um, I don't mind a hung hem. I honestly think it looks nice on projects. You would do it a lot in different things. Like, um, I'm hoping I'm going to make a doll. I'd like to make a doll for you all. Let me just fix this fabric here. Okay. We're not going to be able to go too much further, but we're getting there. But yes, dolls... I do um, a few hung hems in my dolls because I do like a pico edge on like if it's if I put a dress on the doll um, and then like if you do a hat on it that's another hung hem so all right so let's put on our weight again remember it's only gonna pull down on this side that's all we have hung and it's gonna have that little pocket on the other side so again just Making sure you are tensioning your yarn here until you crank to the other side, and then you can hang the rest. I really have been trying to stay out of the picture with my hands. So, um, somebody asked, and I'm going to 
reply to the comment. I just haven't yet. Somebody asked about the ripcord, if it was braided or a filament line. I can't remember. It is a braided line, just so you're braided. But I'm gonna, I'll go comment on that That'll, when I get off of videoing this, because I just saw the comment come through. I just want to thank everybody that has been giving thumbs up and liking and I know these videos aren't going to be for all of my regular followers that are hand knitters, don't have machines, but I also know there's quite a few people out there that have machines that I think I've gained a, some following with those people that, ha you know, they're, they're stuck or, you know, they're, when I, okay, so before I got my machine, I'll tell you, I watched every video I could find out there one um circular sock machines and there weren't a ton all right where did i mess up because i am missing a couple stitches here and if i'm missing stitches that means i'm gonna drop some stitches when this comes off i see this one is going through here Let's get this one where the fishing line's going through it. Okay. And then there's another one. When I pull this, I can see that there's another one. Oh, I am not missing a stitch then. But we all saw that go badly before where I thought I was good and I wasn't good. But um, let's get this one. Come on, stitch. It's going through this right here. Struggle bus, it's okay. Again, if I drop a stitch, I can fix it with grabbing it and then, oh my gosh, um, weaving in a tail through it, okay? So that should be all of them, okay? So I think I did way too many, this one's really long. I mean, it's fine though, but I think I'll do like 30 rows, which I'm probably going to have to change yarn. So let's just reset this to be um, a good count, going slow, because this is the hung row. Okay. I still have my heel spring on, which I'm going to take off right now. I will need a little bit more yarn. That's 26 rows. I do want it to be a little bit longer than that. So I'm going to put, this one has less yarn on the, actually this one has way less. Let's use this one. We'll make our loop and do our join. Okay. I'm at 28. So I'll probably just finish that yarn. I'll just make another long one. It's okay. I don't, this one was just an example for when I was doing demonstrations and showing people what you can do on the machine because you can do so many, you can do other things than just socks, right? So we've been showing you that in these videos, or I've been showing you that. I'm sorry. That was weird. I don't have more than, it's just me, I promise. Okay, so making this loop. Okay. Okay. Sometimes I'm not in the right frame to show, woo, show you. Okay. I'm just going to finish up this yarn because it's really not much left, but leaving a tail to Kitchener. And since I want to stop here, so it goes like this when I close up that seam, I'm going to stop at the same needle. So I'll just do one more row. And then this is a pretty long tail for kitchenering, but I don't want this project to get much longer. So we're gonna just, actually, what I'll do is I'll just tuck the whole cone. It's not much left, but it's just gonna be easier to, 
tuck the whole cone in there. I think. <laughs> well, we'll find out. Maybe it won't be. Okay. Oops. I wanted to knit that stitch. Let's put that in there. So let's just put that right back in the latch since I want it to knit this one. I don't want it to drop that stitch, okay? So do that. And then a color that's gonna contrast, we'll use uh, pink will be good. And like I said, you'll be just Kitchenering across all, like the whole tube versus only just a toe. So. Okay. I'm just going to hold this to join it. Okay. It's going to suck that cone down in there. Since I am starting and stopping, I'm going to try to be consistent and start and stop in the same spot. Clicking one more. There we go. All right. I know the cone's in there, but we're just going to take it off with the cone in it, holding it so it doesn't fall. Crank it off. Okay. Let's take this bottom weight off. Let me lift up my camera and I'll show you what we've got. I'm not going to finish it in this video because I feel like I don't, you know, that's not necessary, but I will show you oh, without getting all tangled up. Let's put that over there. All right. So we have the bonnet, the waist yarn. I did do it. Ah, no, it's about even. Okay. So we're going to go to the opposite side, which is this side, get that uh, rip cord out. Get it all the way out. Take that off. Let's hope I didn't miss any stitches. If I did, like I said, I'll catch them. Okay. So come on, focus. So essentially, this is the coin purse. Okay. You'll slip your metal pieces that you can get. I got them on Amazon. You might be able to get them on like on other findings places. And then once you have it in there, you take your tail, which I didn't leave a very long tail, but you'll just stitch that up and you'll Kitchener the bottom. Then you have a nice, you'll have a nice little purse just like this one. See? Yay! I hope you enjoyed this. I think these are fun little projects. I've also um, done like a small hung hem and then I've done yarn overs, which is essentially doing almost like um, moving one stitch to the next stitch, like a pico edge. And then you can do a small drawstring through it and make a drawstring top and make us you know a drawstring bag so like um if you have D, D players in your life that you could make like a small dice bag these would be perfect so i hope you've enjoyed this and yeah happy cranking y'all happy socktober see you in the next episode or see you in the next video all right bye